Hi. Hi. Do you want? Hello. Well, this is a follow up to the previous, um, you know, uh, video where we talked about, you know, things I wish I had known or things I wish I had paid attention to, um, whichever. And Lou was talking about the signs uh, coming into the marriage that, the, you know, drinking might be a problem, but because of the love that they had at that time, kind of ignoring those signs. Mm -hmm. you know? And um, and how did that go for you? <laughs> well, um, I just, at that point, I went with my unconditional love yeah. instead of love and boundaries yeah. with them. And so um, it, it got entrenched, actually. Um, sadly, the more responsibility my husband took on, the more the binging tended to happen. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> you know, he loved his children, but then he'd drink because he had to look after yeah. his children, all this sort of thing. Yeah. So, so. So then you're into the marriage, you know, you're, um, you're married for, what, 29 years till mm -hmm. he died? Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, so in the later years, what do you wish you had known? Mm -hmm. I have you know? to say that um, I was with him for 25, four year, sorry, 29 years. Um, and obviously I, I talked about leaving. I can't say I shouldn't have left. Um, I can say my children didn't want me to leave, and mm -hmm. looking back, I, you always ask the question, should you have gone? <laughs> um, but we, we had a loving relationship, and when he wasn't drinking, he was lovely, and so mm -hmm. that was kind of my choice. I'm certainly not saying it uh, for everyone that is listening to this. Um, you must make your own healthy choices. It's kind of Hobson's choice, that, isn't mm -hmm. it? You know, mm -hmm. the, you know, it's one of these ones where it's no perfect no. solution to it. You know, each each uh, uh, each choice has actually got a downside to it, you know, mm -hmm. a fairly large downside to it. And the one you you continue with the drinker, and the other one, you know, then you actually continue with a without a father for your children, you know. So uh, there's no, there's no sort of perfect solution. There. And the complication was, of course, if you do that, then leaving your children with your father when you know they can drink at any time. Yeah. So um, you know the, the relationship gets gets even more yeah. submerged at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Gets murky. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so okay, you're in the marriage now. You've been in it for a while. Um, your husband's drinking now, and um, so from all that we do now, is there, is there anything from bottled up that you would take and say, well, I wish I'd known that then? You know, maybe I could have applied that. Maybe that would have been something that could have helped. Um, I well, absolutely, and I think I say it a lot, and I had to absolutely no um, qualms in kind of saying it again. Now, at the beginning, the last video, uh, I said that, you know, your love for your partner, yeah. if you start putting boundaries down, if they really love you, they will follow through on that, particularly yeah. in the passionate, you know, yeah. beginning bits of a relationship. Actually, as you go on, that the very reverse happens. It actually becomes the thing that uh, ties you into this dance, um, because I, the main reason, reason I stayed with my husband is he absolutely loved me. And when he wasn't stuck in a bottle, yeah. he was a great father, he was my music manager, all of yeah. these kind of things. Um, can, so, I, can I just interject a minute here? Um, I will said this often, it, it's not a choice between loving the alcohol and loving you, it's not like that. You know, it, yes, it's almost, it's like a love triangle, yeah. you know. And the choice is not between you and the alcohol, it's between hurting and not hurting. Yeah. And, and, and it's, uh, there's a need for the alcohol, you know, which is, means that you're not even part of that equation, you know. Um, it's sad, but it can they continue to love you as well. I mean, but to, to over here, it feels as if you've got a mistress, I'm sure you understand that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, it seems like that. But, you know, I just wanted to say that it's about this need for yeah. the alcohol. Yeah. Um, so what you pile in with, which is absolutely intuitive, if you know you're loved, then there is an appeal section. You have a court of appeal with someone that you love. Mm -hmm. um, and because they love you, you usually get quite a good, um, you know, verdict on the situation. So so you can negotiate. And, and, you know, generally, my first time, you know, it was very amenable. He would do stuff for me. Yeah, yeah. You know, if I needed stuff fixed, he'd take me places if I needed, you know. He yeah. was really good like that, yeah, yeah. you know. So that, of course, was my highway in. Mm -hmm. um, and I couldn't understand why... He wasn't responding. No, you know. Um, so then I get distressed. 
when I and then I still eat uh, do go on a binge. Then I bring my children in because mm -hmm. I know he absolutely adored his children. Mm -hmm. So surely, if I come with my appeal and my pain and the children's being wrecked, then it will stop him. So I kept piling on mm -hmm. the pressure of love, um, and it, it you know if anything I felt it got worse. And this went on as a dance mm -hmm. for years and years and years, and I finally recognised that what I was doing by bringing my children, my relationship, my love to him, was hitting that terrible shame button, mm -hmm. which I think you'd agree as a, um, as a professor of drink and drugs and having been there, that it's the, is it the greatest button in terms of Certainly what goes one of on? Them. Yeah. Certainly one of them. You know, I, I, I think for different people, we have different buttons, but you know, that's always there mm -hmm. uh, in the midst of it. Mm -hmm. you know? So you are behaving badly, you are really rude, you are this, you are that, you are that, we are dreadfully hurt, our children, lives are being distressed, please mm -hmm. stop drinking. Mm -hmm. And it took me so long mm -hmm. to realise that at the end of that, you know, his primary feeling was, oh shit, what an awful person I am. Mm -hmm. And then of course he'd go and binge. And it's so obvious looking back on it. But that's yeah. what I used to do. I went to push the appeal button and I pushed the guilt button. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've told the story many times um, uh, about, you know, when at the end of my drinking, you know, being in the the, the, man, the manager's office and saying, you know, I'm a hopeless case, you know, and, and him saying, yes, but you're not a lost cause. And that was one of the things that really got in through my fuddled head. And, and it, this was not about, you know, what I did. This was about who I was. And this is what Lou's actually talking about. And he, he so easily could have gone into, well, I'm really sorry, we'll have to sack you. And, you know, you've been he a good person. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, I mean <laughs> when you, if you'd seen the state of me, and I still remember this one phrase. You know, this is what got in through my, I was actually in the DTs at the time. This is what got through those DTs. Mm -hmm. And I still remember it to this day. And it is one of the things I, I clung on to. And I think that we're back to hope again, mm -hmm. you know, back to hope. And one of the things that we do within Bottled Up is the calling out the good, you know. We, we often talk about the Jekyll and Hyde, mm -hmm. you know, and we're calling out Hyde. Uh, sorry, <laughs> we're not calling out Hyde. Mm -hmm. No, 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 sorry. Got it the wrong way around. We're calling out Jekyll, you know, and trying to mm -hmm. sort of so, get rid of Hyde. I feel that when that bloke said that sentence, I was just thinking if you were saying it, it's like mm -hmm. he just put his hand right down mm -hmm. into a big pit of despair oh, yeah, absolutely. and just began to yeah. pull you up. So this is why yeah. uh, um, some people get really mad about this and I understand it. How can I have um, yeah. a drunk with all that he does, you know, yeah. but that's not husband. You know, we, I, uh, we have a phrase in our counselling, not Andrew. And Andrew and talk about behaviors that people yeah. get stuck in so that's not husband yeah. and so what we're asking you to do is to speak affirmation yeah. as to the person that you love begin yeah. you're building a room of respect for him yeah. and he won't have any self-respect yeah. all he'll have is the respect you start to give him yeah and that's really really important um, and it's you know you're not in denial at that point you're actually, um, you're almost creating a future by saying, this is who you are, I respect you, I know what sort of man or yeah. woman you are, I want to be with you. Yeah. And, and that then presses the hope. There's a nice Butter. phrase that describes this kind of strategy, and that's, it's better to light a candle than curse the darkness. Yeah. And that's really what this is about, it's about lighting a candle, you know, it's about giving some hope in there rather than, you know, and sort of all the time, you know, reinforcing, you know, what a shit the person is. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, excuse the language, but that's kind of what it feels like all the time, you know. Just heap more on top of me, you yeah. know. Um, you know, talking to somebody yesterday, and we were talking about the, the sackcloth and ashes, you know, because he was very amenable after mm -hmm. drinking, mm -hmm. you know. Not before it, but after it, because of the shame, you know, and accept anything, you know. Mm -hmm. So he's sitting there in the corner, yeah, more sackcloth and ashes, you know. You know the drinker because he's sitting in the corner <laughs> with a hair shirt on. And that's when, you know, you feel, I, 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 need, I need something to bolster who mm. I am, you know. Mm. So you get angry 
at that point or shamed mm. and then you know, the drink will be the anesthetic that you've already learned. Absolutely. Nobody's saying that this is an easy strategy. Mm. You know, far from it, you mm. know. And, and there are people who would just go, you do what? You know, how can you praise somebody who's, you know, doing this? Mm. You know. But if you're a mum, you know, we know now because we understand emotional literacy. If you ha keep telling a kid she's stupid, she's doing this, she's other, that kid will never reach its full yeah. potential. And in a way, yeah. what you've got with an alcoholic is a very irresponsible child in there now, yeah. often in the pain of their child. And so you're actually building that person up. And if you married him, presumably her, mm -hmm. you married someone who's really lovely. And that's the true person. The drink yeah. warps the truth. And so if you start telling mm -hmm. the truth about who they are, then you remind them. It's almost as if you call them out yeah. again, um, back into their true identity. It's separating the drinker uh, from the drinking, you know, and, and, and that's difficult to do. Yeah. It's one of the reasons why a lot of psychologists hate, you know, this uh, idea and, um, uh, you know, that they have in the Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, my name's John and I am an alcoholic, mm. you know. Uh, they don't like that because mm. it's it's taking on an identity, you know. I mean, I, I personally I don't really mind it because I see good psychological reasons. Well, for it's doing ownership it. as far as it's there. Yes. Yeah. it's not yeah. identity. Yeah, but, but a lot of yeah. people hate it because you know it, it kind of ties you into an identity, and and what it does for some people is it gives an excuse. I'm an alcoholic. Well, what do alcoholics do? They drink. Mm. Well, you know. So might be might as well be a good alcoholic. You know, so, but it, it is this separating, you know, behaviour and person. And, and as again, nobody's going to tell you that's mm. easy to do. So look up the four Ps if you're in the programme, yep. uh, because we do go down those behaviours. They're totally understandable behaviours, yep. but they tend to hit the buttons that yep. cause the drink to yep. continue. Yep. Um, and again, look at um, some of the things about affirmation, learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, remember the person that you got into the relationship with because that's who they are underneath that's the person you're going for mm. that's the room that you're building for them to step into yeah. um, and it's enormously important there's a logic to it if you can put down all the emotions yeah. that you carry uh, there's a logic to that behavior yeah. uh, um, so first of all you do it to yourself mm -hmm. take care of yourself you get your own strength and respect back and then you begin to um, just build a respectful kind of relationship, if you like. And I, I did that. I stood in front of a mirror, mm -hmm. and I remember the, the moment I did it, and I, I said, I'm sick of being this vengeful, you know, wrathful woman, you know, every time he drinks. And I just stood, stood away from it. I said, I'm not ever going to do that again. I'm going to be me. Yeah. So I just, I, I think I'm a fairly loving person, and I certainly love him and my children. She is a very, um, very loving person. Um, so yeah. I tried as much as I could just to treat him yeah. in the way anybody should be treated. I got my power back. Yeah. I got my power back. So, so this is something which affirms both, you know, so it's, 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 it's double-sided this, you know, because you don't want to be the fishwife, you don't want to be the critic, you don't want it all the time, you know, you want to be the nice, loving, affirming person. Affirming the person but not the behaviour, you know, and you, it's a separation of that, which is why, you know, we, we, we use um, things like uh, love and, you know, mm -hmm. and hope and, you know, uh, take a read of the programme. That's what it's really is, yeah, it's you, all about. You're allowed to hate the drink and you can say, I hate the drink, I hate what it does to you. Yeah. I hate the moment yeah. I see it in you. So you can pour your hatred on the drink because it's horrible. Mm -hmm. It gets yeah. into your partner's life or your children's life or your parents' life. Yeah. And it causes havoc. Yeah. And you're allowed to get angry with that yeah. substance, you know, when it arrives into your life. But try not to make that scorn and hate. Yeah. You can say, I love the sober Mary. Yeah. I hate the drunk Mary. Mm. You know, that's okay. Mm. That's making a definite distinction, you know, between the two. Mm. And can we just say at the end as a caveat, if you are being uh, sexually or physically or uh, yeah. violently yeah. abused by your drinker, in no way no. do we say you should stay. You absolutely, absolutely or your children. It's happening to your children. We are not facilitating abusive relationships. Safety first. Yeah. Safety first. So I'll make that really clear. So um, that's a caveat in everything that we do. Yeah. We will support you now to leave if that's what you need to do. Oh, absolutely. You know, go see a doctor, yeah. go, you know, talk to a friend. So, yeah. yeah.
Yeah. Okay, so we hope that's helpful. Please give your comments. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we've decided we're going to leave them all on, haven't we? Because you're a great believer in free speech. Yeah, we, I, I, you know, I think we. They have all to get to say. Yeah. No, I, I I can't believe in free speech and then <laughs> you know the, the censor people who don't agree with yes. me. Oh, yes. Well, I could, but I mean that's. <laughs> I mean they're generally. I, I have to say really nice, but every now and then yeah. somebody tells us off. <laughs> yeah. There we go. That's what you put yourself out there. You've got to. Yeah. Allow people to. Because that's something else I would actually say. You know, mm. don't just listen to us. Listen to lots and lots of um, people. Mm. You know, um, and and take the best of it. Mm. You know, we we're not against any organisation. No. Just take the best of it, what suits you. And, suits you know, John got the term Sobers for Alcoholics Anonymous, so in no way is he putting that down. Yes. We, have, we have slight, I think in this age, we have slightly different philosophies, mm -hmm. um, like the thing about the identity of the alcoholic, yeah. but, but as an organisation, it, it's helped so, so many people. I got sober through Alcoholics Anonymous. I also got sober through an NHS um, group as well. I got sober through a psychiatrist. There was lots and lots of things came into my life. What I decided at the end was, this is what suits me best. But I could only say that after I tried a few other things, mm. you know. And, 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 you know, and everything that I tried gave me something. Mm. But I had to decide on what uh, suited me the best. And somebody and quick for, uh, from a drunk to a, decade, to a doctor yeah. in a decade. I mean, we talk about John's story a lot because for those who are living with a drinker, he is a prime example of despair turning into hope, yes. turning into great functions yes. in terms of your life. I'm a butterfly. Yes, yes. indeed, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, darling, you're a butterfly. I think we better go and start. And start. <laughs> Getting a bit whimsical there. <laughs> <laughs> we we love you all. We we you yes. know you're all really really important to us. Do yeah. do talk to each other. Do talk to us, okay. and have a great day. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. <laughs>